What is good, Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with Tesla Spy and video, the QQQ, and a couple of other stickers. I want to break down what's happening with the overall market thus far, what's going on with the economic calendar, and what you should be watching for in terms of news and data for Tesla. But before I break the double's information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am personally not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit $500 into the account, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks. If you deposit $25,000 or more, you're guaranteed 75 free stocks. And the offer ends very soon in just a couple of weeks and just two weeks from now. Anyways, for Tesla, we have a very, very interesting structure that developed today. Tesla got this little pop in the daytime before it came back down and ended up losing its support at 170. We came all the way down to almost 168 a share flat, very, very close to that support. Then we saw Tesla try to pump all the way back up as the day went on, as the whole market started to bounce in anticipation of the bank earnings. And this ended up going all the way up to about 175 a share before coming back down. And we're currently sitting at 174. So the question is, will Tesla continue to squeeze and push all the way up to fill this imbalance up here? Or is Tesla about to come all the way back down to support and lose it and retest 170.5? In my personal opinion, this depends a lot on the big earnings coming out. So we're going to break down what the chart suggests is more probable, what you should be watching for as time goes on. But let me first say, when it comes to the market, we have to look at this data. We have to look at other things like this before I break down the charts. So tomorrow is going to be Friday, April 12th, 2024. An hour before the market opens, we have the export and import prices coming out month over month and year over year. This might not affect the market that much. And then later on at 10 o'clock a.m., we have the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report coming out, inflationary expectations, the five-year inflationary expectations, and other pieces of data like that. And then later on, starting at 2.30 p.m., we have Bostic and Daly giving speeches. That's going to be very important as well. So we'll just have to see how things go from here. We have some data coming out, especially at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, for tomorrow, we also have something else which is going to have a big effect on Tesla in the markets, and it's going to be the big bank earnings. The earnings come out uh, basically before the market opens, and I'll be giving you guys a report on how they're looking. We have JP Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, BlackRock, Citigroup, and a bunch of others out there announcing their earnings, and what they say could be very impactful. The reason for this is because it's the bank's and provide a lot more leverage for these companies. They help fund and fuel what is uh, basically seen from these markets, at least for the majority of companies out there. And it also affects consumer sentiment on how things are looking. So it's going to be very important. This is kicking off the big earnings season that's starting. And it's going to be very key for the markets. So I'll break this down tomorrow. If the banks do very, very well, and we have decent guidance, at least for most of them, this could help the market pump again if we get a very, very bullish reaction. If we get the opposite, if the banks end up not doing too well, and we get not the best of guidance, the market could still get a rug pull. So it's going to be very important to consider all of this moving forward. Now, for more data, the market is still greedy, believe it or not. We're still seeing buyers stepping in, trying to step in, uh, take their positions, and continue to hedge. We're seeing more and more buyers right over here as the market is greedy. But what's interesting is the puts and call option positioning is now on fear mode. We're seeing a lot of puts being bought. And the question is, are we about to fuel a squeeze because of this, or are the puts in the correct position because the market's about to get a rug pull. We'll have to find out. The market volatility, however, is starting to drop as we're starting to see the VIX become more neutral. This is important because we're approaching our 50 daily moving average. And the VIX is showing some surprising weakness relative to before. So this could lead to a big shift in it. This is affecting implied volatility, and this implies that the market could be pumping even higher because of that. I'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. Another thing worth noting is that when you look at SPY, for tomorrow, April 12th, we have uh, very close to 450,000 of these calls expiring, and we have over 800,000 puts expiring. We have a 516 max pain with a 1.75 puts to call ratio. So the majority of people have puts. Majority of people and institutions are betting the market's going to sink. Is this going to happen? We'll just have to wait and see. But if I was a market maker, I would have a lot of tricks up my sleeves. I may even try to squeeze a lot of shorts. That's a strong possibility if, since we have all these puts expiring. Now, for Tesla, we're seeing a lot of news about this as earnings is approaching very, very soon within a couple of weeks. And we're going to be looking to see what happens. We're seeing a lot of different projections coming out from analysts, which caused Tesla to dip the way it did. We had downgrades from Bank of America. They're still bullish overall, but they're saying that Tesla may not run as much as they thought before. Same thing with Piper Sandler and a couple of other analysts. And that's very, very important as the consensus is kind of shifting for earnings. We're not having the strongest expectations for earnings. So we'll have to see what happens with their growth and what Tesla's projecting moving forward. 
There's been a lot of talk from these other analysts like Jeffries as well. They came out and they're saying that Tesla may not have the strongest deliveries. So I'm just going to wait and see, see how things go from here. It's going to be very, very important. Now, moving forward, Tesla's also launching the new long-range RWD Model Y in Europe. And that's very important as well. Uh, with this coming out, this is going to give them a lot more exposure. It's going to help them add a lot more to its inventory. Well, this wasn't the best of news for them to do so. So now, now they're trying to find different ways to be more creative. And they're trying to now launch this to get more sales moving forward. This is going to be available in all sorts of different European countries from Austria to Denmark. Finland, Germany, Spain, the list goes on. You can see all of them right over here. That's good news for Tesla. Let's see how this goes for them moving forward. Now, on top of all of this, with popularity growing, we have about 94 million in volume. We've got some decent volume. Not the strongest, but still decent. And also when it comes to short volume, this is still kind of increasing a little bit. So it's still kind of flat, but going up just a tiny bit as we're seeing more shorts. Uh, Jeffries gave Tesla a hold rating, saying hold on to your shares. Not encouraging buying or selling, just saying hold on. Piper, Piper Sandler gave Tesla an overweight rating. So did Morgan Stanley. So, so far, analysts have kind of like decent views, but they did end up downgrading their overall price targets. So they're still bullish overall, just not as bullish as before for most of these analysts. Now, for the price price ratio, this is still a little bit down here. So Tesla's not at the strongest it's been compared to before. It's still kind of weak compared to what we've seen in the past from Tesla because of what happened during its earnings and also because of what happened with deliveries. On top of all of this, don't forget that Fridays tend to be green about 49% of the time. And we tend to see more volatility at 10 o'clock a.m., 11 a.m., and also at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then we'll see how things go from here. But moving forward, I just wanted to say that for Tesla, I just wanted to uh, show you guys the chart now. Things are looking very, very interesting going into tomorrow. Now, the big bank earnings are going to have a big effect on Tesla in the market, in my personal opinion. So even though technicals do give us a lot of views about how things can move, they're not entirely sufficient. But for technicals, I have some interesting developments being shown on this chart. So if we're bullish tomorrow, I'm going to go over a lot of bullish and bearish cases, by the way, then talk about what's more probable. If we're bullish uh, it is possible for Tesla to try to break 175. If we do break this, then you're going to be looking for a move for 177.6 to fill this imbalance. And once that fills, we could be going all the way up to 180 or very close to that. If we're bearish, you want to see Tesla lose our important EMAs over here, this 172.5 area that ends up getting uh, lost. You're going to be looking for 170.5 followed by 168 or very close to that range like we saw today. Those are your levels on Tesla. What is looking more probable? As of right now, I just want to call out that SPY and the overall market are looking bullish in anticipation of the big bank earnings. They do suggest that the patterns and charts do suggest more upside is a strong possibility, especially when you look at the options chain. But I'm not going to promise anything. It really depends on what we see from earnings. But the charts do look like they may try to squeeze higher. This suggests that the overall market, just like how it affected Tesla today, it could still affect Tesla again tomorrow, and it might actually get a surprise move to the upside despite how it's looking right now at resistance. So you want to be open-minded to that possibility and watch and see how it reacts just to be safe. So with that being said, when you consider the fact that if we go to our four-hour time frame, we're nearing a bullish cross in the PPO, and normally when this happens, we see Tesla pop a little bit more. Also, Tesla loves to form cups, likes to fill imbalances. So for example, if you look at this imbalance right here, Tesla came down and came up to fill it. Look at this imbalance right here. Tesla came down and then came up to fill it. Look at this imbalance right here, came down, came up to fill it. We have this one right here, came down. Are we about to go all the way back up to fill it? It's a possibility, right? Tesla could still try to do so. We also have an uptrend on the four hour time frame for the last couple of days that went up, came down a little bit more, could go higher. So the chart does suggest that upside is looking a little bit more likely, especially thanks to these earnings. But just to be safe, always be open minded. So what's more likely is Tesla might try to break 175. Uh, it might it might come down first in the morning since we are still at resistance, might come down a little bit, retest this imbalance at 172, grab liquidity in the 172 is just like how it dipped today, then see an attempt to push to 175 if that breaks. This imbalance could fill all the way up to 177.8, almost at 178. And then 180 is also a possibility. So the most likely possibility Tesla comes down a bit and starts breaking to the upside and tries to fill this imbalance. I find that to be a bit more probable. Now, once again, we'll see what the earnings cause, but that is what the chart is suggesting as a strong possibility. For SPY, we have a very interesting structure. This looks very symmetrical. So if you draw a line in between, right, you could see how these charts are kind of like resembling one another. I'm sorry, also like right here. So you could do it right here and also right here. On this end, this is like for this imbalance, 
that shows how it could try to fill this imbalance. And then from this end, if you draw a line in between, notice how we had this like chop in between in the center. Uh, we have a double bottom like structure. This is our left bottom. This is our right bottom. And the move up would take us all the way up here. So it looks very symmetrical. So you could draw it that way. You could also draw it from like right here. Either way it works. But what I'm seeing is if we're bullish, you want to be testing 520 and break that. If that breaks, I think 524 is coming. If we're bearish, you want to see it lose 516.5 to 515. If we lose that support, we're going to be coming all the way down to 512. Okay. I'm not calling out both sides to say I'm always right. I make mistakes. I'm a human. I'm not always going to be correct. In fact, I don't really know what the market will ever do the next day. I simply just give you guys assessments based on probabilities and such. But I just want to say, based on probabilities and based off the chart, the most likely possibility for SPY is the bullish case plays out. We may come down a little bit in the morning, retest 516.5, which is the 0.236 Fibonacci retracement, then try to rebound and push for 520. If that breaks, 524 is a possibility. I think we're going to try to get to at least 520, might come down first and push it for 520, eventually higher levels from a technical standpoint. But keep in mind, it also depends on these big bank earnings. So we'll just have to see just to be safe. But the chart does suggest more upside is a stronger possibility. For the QQQ, same thing. We've got a nice little breakout. We do have this downtrend overall on the chart from the last couple of uh, weeks, but we'll see if the QQQ maintains this. Now we have a nice double bottom like structure and we're seeing some buyers stepping in. Watch 446.8 as resistance. Watch 444 as support. Could come down a little bit and try to rebound and try to push higher into the 446.8 to 448 area. So I see a little bit of a rebound potential coming. Might retrace a bit first. Might retrace and retest 444, if not a little bit lower than that. And then we could be looking for an attempt to get higher. Part of why I say that is because of NVIDIA and Apple. QQQ does have potential to go all the way up to 446.8 and then 448. Uh, I say that because NVIDIA is looking like a monster right now. we got a very, very monstrous move all the way back up to 908. Watch support at 900 and then 892. We have this very important range. NVIDIA has been in this range many, many times before in the past. If we break past 908, we have potential to go up to 920. If we lose 892, we could be sinking all the way down to our 200 EMA at 883, followed by 877. We're in the middle right now, so give this some time. But in my personal opinion, NVIDIA is showing some strength. It might gap down tomorrow, retest 900, and then it might try to take off from there. But the chart is showing a lot of strength. It looks like it wants to go higher. It could even come all the way up to the 920 area. So it's showing life. It might come down first and try to push higher. So watch for that. If that's the case, this could help the QQQ. Additionally, Apple could also help the QQQ and SPY because when you look at Apple, we have the support at 174 around that area. If we lose this watch, 172.5. We also have resistance right over here around 175.75, then 176.5, then 178. I think that Apple might retest our 50 EMA, 174, and then watch to see if it continues to break out because as of right now, we're looking strong. We broke this resistance and Apple is showing some life. Uh, I also want to note that we have this imbalance over here. So this could also get filled. And if you look at, let me see the four hour, this looks to me like it's showing a lot of life. It's going to likely retrace to this support and maybe try to bounce. It's going to be looking for that little dip coming before it tries to rebound. But this is acting as a magnet right now for Apple trying to push it higher to higher levels. So I think Apple looks more bullish overall. It looks a little bit more bullish. It may retrace a little bit first and then try to continue to push from a technical standpoint. But we'll see if we end up getting a confluence of support, a confluence of bullish indicators, thanks to what we see from the big bank earnings. But the charts do look a bit more bullish in my personal opinion. So. For Tesla, it's holding up nicely. Could it retrace a bit? Yes, it can. And whether it retraces or not will depend a lot on the big bank earnings. But technicals and the overall market does suggest that Tesla might come down a bit, then start pushing higher and try to break this resistance and try to fill this imbalance for one Friday squeeze. That looks a bit more likely, so we'll wait and see just to be safe. With that being said, let's talk about the other tickers I have uh, in store for today. On the four-hour time frame, Palantir is showing strength right now. Now, Yes, it could retest 22.76, but I do see an attempt for it to get up to about 23.11 if it keeps going. And if we lose 22.76, look for a bigger drop. In my personal opinion, I think there's a very good chance it's going to push higher. So I think that we could make our way all the way up to 23.11. I think that Palantir is looking more bullish. For Supermicro, it's showing a little bit of life, but it is retracing a bit. So it might retrace a little bit towards... 927 if we hold that look for a bounce back up to 950 if we lose 927 we could retrace a little bit more all the way down to about 915 but my gut is telling me 
the four hour is turning more bullish and this is going to reaccumulate, come down and start pushing higher towards 950. So super micro looks a bit more bullish. We'll see how that goes. Might retrace a bit and try to push with Nvidia. Rivian has come down quite a bit, but I do think it's going to try to retest 9.8 for a little bit of a counter trend move just temporarily. And we'll see if it rejects or not. If it breaks past this, look for 10. If not, it's going to come back down. So give this some time. For SoFi, we're going to be looking for a move all the way up towards 7.73. That's going to be very, very key for it. Uh, and we'll see if this is forming a head and shoulders or not. Uh, it is looking like that from a technical standpoint, but it's going to be heavily dictated by the big er the big bank earnings. Excuse me. The banks could launch this thing all the way up to $8, or they could cause a big rug pull. I'm going to be very patient nonetheless. For AMD, the chart looks a little bit more bullish as we're trying to break past our 170 resistance at the 20 EMA. If we break through this, look for a push all the way up to 174. If we fail to break here, we're going to be coming back down. My gut tells me it might try to uh, push a little bit higher. For ARM, we're looking a bit more bullish. Could be looking for a push all the way up to about 130, 132.5 and higher levels like that. If we lose 128.8, we could start sinking. But my gut tells me it might try to push a little bit more. So ARM has more potential, uh, at least from a technical standpoint. We'll see what the big bank earnings give us. Coinbase is kind of stuck right now. So we have resistance at 262 or very close to that area. The issue with Coinbase is as we're at this resistance, I don't know for sure if it's going to break from here. It is showing some strength, but we have to watch for confirmation. If we break past 262, look for a push for 268. If we lose, if we don't break 262, we, we could be coming down to 257.6 and start sinking to 252 again. It is showing some strength. I do favor it, maybe trying to break higher, but just to be safe, we're at resistance, so give it a little bit more time. Amazon looks a bit more bullish because it's been trying to push uptrending very, very nicely, so it could actually approach, it might retest 187.77 to 5 EMA, then start pushing higher to about 190, and we'll see what the big bank earnings cause for this. Meta is looking a bit more bullish, holding our 20 EMA. If you lose 518 to 20 EMA, we're going to be sinking all the way down to about 511. If we continue to hold above this, whether we retest this or not, we're going to be looking for a push for at least 526. This chart looks a little bit more bullish, could come down a little bit and then try pushing later on. So I do see 526 likely coming. Microsoft looks kind of flat right now. It's been going back and forth and back and forth. It's showing some strength, but just like I said about Coinbase, we're at resistance right now at 428. We haven't broken that resistance yet. If we break this, look for 430. If we fail to do so, we're going to be coming down to 426 and 424. We'll have to see if this thing can push higher, so give it some time. For Coinbase, we're looking a bit more, uh, not, not Coinbase, sorry, Google. For Google, we look a bit more bullish. We're looking at 160 as resistance. If we break this, 162 is coming next. Uh, we have support at 159.57. If we lose that, 157 is coming. I could see this retest 159.57, maybe a little bit lower, and then continue higher because the overall trend is bullish. It's been continuing to uptrend slowly and slowly, slowly. So it might come down a bit and start pushing higher for 162. It still looks bullish. Now, the VIX is a little concerning. Now, we got this big wick that formed here, big rejection, but we're barely holding our 50 EMA. So we're at support right now. The 50 EMA, the, the yellow line you guys see where the VIX is holding at. See this yellow line? If we bounce off this, this would be a signal that the market may actually get a rejection. If we lose this and start sinking, we're going to come down to the red line here, the uh, 200 EMA at 14.24. I'm going to be watching this like a hawk very, very closely to see what this does. If we get that break, this could be a signal the markets can go even higher. So give this the time it needs. Be calm, cool, and collected. Be very, very patient. And we'll have to see how things go. The VIX is showing some potential for a rejection, but I want to give this as much time as possible and see how this looks. It is looking a bit more bearish, so I'm not going to hold that view or change it. It looks a bit more bearish, but just to be safe, we'll wait and see. For the dollar, the dollar is looking uh, decent overall. Got this nice break thanks to CPI. However, however, we're barely holding uh, basically this 105 area as support. Uh, if we end up losing 105, look for a dip all the way down towards 104.82. And if it dips, it's going to be turning a lot more bearish and that's going to be bullish for the stock market. If it holds 105 and starts rebounding more, that's going to be a bearish signal for the stock market. So it's coming down a bit of this looking a little bit more bearish, but just to be safe, we have to give it time and see if we lose 105 on the dollar. That's another very, very important signal to be watching for. With that being said, the market, in my opinion, looks like it might come down a bit and then start pushing higher. We look bullish on SPY. We look bullish on the overall market. And this could be very positive for Tesla. It's going to depend on the bank earnings. So we'll give it some time and also what news comes out. But the chart does suggest that 
the upside is a bit more probable overall. Could we dip a little bit? Yes, we could, but then we might see a big rebound if the market gets that big squeeze thanks to the big banks. So just to be safe, we'll see what happens with these earnings. If not, if they don't do well, then Tesla could always come down, so be open-minded to anything, but the charts do favor more upside. Same thing for the option chain on SPY, so we'll just give it some time and see. All right, so remember, guys, the reason why I go over the bullish and bearish cases is not because I want to always be right. I have said this many times. I can be wrong many, many times, and it happens. But I want you guys to be prepared for anything always just to be safe because as a responsible trader, you have to be very adaptive to anything because the market could flip in a second. The market is insane sometimes. So always have your levels in mind. Know which way the market could go if we end up breaking one level or if we break past another. And then just know right now what's more probable from the time I'm recording this is the market going higher based off what I'm seeing on the charts and based off what the option chain suggests. All right, so this could help Tesla go up more. We'll wait and see how it goes for tomorrow. And I'll be back tomorrow to give you guys an update on the big banks. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. I'll see you guys very soon tomorrow. And peace out.